Yes, and they're e even a uh, pet nutritionist, which is an yep. interesting uh, yeah. professional that yes. wasn't even aware existed. So right. really, that partnership is going to be a more most important. Critical, and critical. Re really identifying them before the before there's a there's a problem. And that's the key. So you know you need to go to the process because you know p the vets are people, and you may not connect with that one. So you have to find one. And there's 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 research. Even though there's only two thousand, that's not many. There are resources to find them. Like Correct. The and can you yep. uh, the AHVMA, the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association dot org, will allow you to be able to search by state and even country to find a veterinarian. And if by chance you're in an area that doesn't have a holistic veterinarian, many holistic vets do phone consultations. So you may need to use your traditional veterinary practice for emergencies or urgent care, but then you're able to create a wellness lifestyle approach with a veterinarian, even by phone or by the internet, as we do here mm -hmm. on the Healthy Pet website. Yeah, this is it's a really amazing resource. This is, the, this is the 21st century and you know there's resources that we have that we didn't have la last mm -hmm. century that, and this is really you know, an example of one of them. It's excellent. So it's a good opportunity to be able to provide people with the same resources um, in terms of wellness proactive living that you're doing for people. We're able to transfer down to the animals that we care for. And what would you say are some of the more common topics if someone hasn't been on the pet site that people are... We are do a lot of discussion of nutrition, of course, because mm -hmm. nutrition is the foundation of health. And so species-appropriate nutrition is discussed a lot. Second, we talk a lot about the frame or the body structural system as well as the organ health. It's important that dogs have, dogs and cats are both wired as athletes, so it's really important that we're able to create a body that's fine-tuned, good muscle structure, weight management, heart, so liver, is, is kidney support. is exercise part of that too? Huge part of it, mm -hmm. a huge part of it. So movement, daily motion and movement, regardless of the pet's age, even old pets need to move their bodies. Although we change what we do for older pets, animals need to move their bodies from the day they're born until they literally can't move anymore. And then there are things we can do to help them keep moving at that point as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, addressing physical frame and organ function, as well as the third pillar of health, which is a pet's immune system. Mm -hmm. And it's important that they have a functional immune system, not an underactive immune system that allows cancer to occur or an overactive immune system that would allow autoimmune disease to occur. We really focus on creating a balanced immunologic response in pets. Yeah, I've actually been using animals as an analogy uh, for exercise for humans right. because uh, in many ways there's a lot of similarities in that you do, we do need this daily ex uh, motion mm -hmm. requirement, but, but it's a very specific type of motion. You don't see many animals, and perhaps you can correct me, I'm obviously not a veterinarian, but I don't see ma many animals like running marathons well, or doing an hour of cardio a day. Th and that's correct. Um, and in fact, many people assume that, um, that just playing around the house is adequate exercise. Really, dogs need straight line, aerobic, heart thumping, walking to create muscle tone and cardiovascular health. Too. And they do, it needs to be pulsed, mm -hmm. which means they, you know, just like people, we need, to, we need to exert ourselves and then we need to back off and, and move a little slower and then we need to exert ourselves and back off and move a little slower and that's very true with dogs and cats as well. Cat exercise poses a little bit of a, um, of a dilemma because it can be difficult to get your cat motivated mm -hmm. but there are things you can do and we discuss that on the site as well. Yeah, if, if the cats in the wild where they're not fed by their owners they have to actually catch their prey. That's correct. And in the process of catching their prey or really the, is really their true work because if they don't do that they're not going to survive. That's correct. They have to run they have really to move. fast. Yes and they have to integrate smells and sights and sounds right. and motion and hearing and of course uh, hunting a mouse or a prey species twice a day is entirely different than getting off the couch, glumping to the all-you-can-eat food bowl, gorging yourself on high salt, fat, mm -hmm. sodium, carbohydrate-based, dehydrated, non-species appropriate food, and then lugging yourself back to the couch. That's a traditional cat's lifestyle in the United States, but we're changing that. And it contributes to pet obesity. Oh my, it, it contributes to all the major yeah. degenerative diseases happening with our dogs and cats today, just as it does with people. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's interesting, many of the same um, variables and factors that contribute to human's health, which is the pervasive influence of the drug companies and the food industry and, and really their deceptive marketing ploys to get you to make choices mm -hmm. that really benefit their long-term corporate interests and really are not aligned with the, the, the long-term health benefits of your pet. Mm -hmm. So and this, is, this is what I obviously expose on the site for humans and this is what you do such a marvelous job of doing for pets because I'm just not aware of mm -hmm. those details. And, you know, we, we put, put our focus on, on people, but so I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, you really, if you have a pet, if you know someone that has a pet, it really is just, I don't know, beyond crazy not to, to get a subscription to the newsletter. It's free, there's no charge for it, and it's just 
phenomenal, fabulous information that can really help you take control of your pet's health, which is really the, the key of it, the key of the whole story. You know, you don't have these, they're not expensive solutions. Mm -hmm. It's just simple, practical things that you necessarily would never have thought of that can make such a dramatic difference. So, again, I encourage you, and you know, Dr. Becker is part of our whole family that allows you to take control of not only you and your family's health, but your pet's health, too.